Hey everyone, I'm Flixar and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super modernistic and clean looking intro inside After Effects. So let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new composition. We're going to call this main. And we're going to probably set it to around 15 seconds. That's probably the longest you'd want. Hit enter and here we have your comp. The background's just going to be a solid color of your preferred color. So right click here, new, solid, and then make it your preferred color. I'm going to try and recreate the one in the intro as much as possible. So I'm going to go with this purple, hit OK, hit OK again, and here's your background. This is basically it for the background. This is just a plain color, so it's not much work for the background. Next, we're going to make the shape. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use the pen tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little button here, click on it, and toggle proportional grid. Now to come up with this, now what you want to do is we're going to hide the background just so it's a bit easier. I'm going to turn off the fill by clicking the fill, and then clicking none, hit OK. I'm going to turn on the stroke by having it on solid color. Make it white just by clicking here and dragging to white, and make it 60 pixels wide. Now I'm going to be creating the letter F in that kind of three line style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to about the middle of this line right here. I'm going to click once, then go to the top of it and click once again. And it'll create this line just like this. So now you're going to click off in this little section down here so you're not on the same layer. And now we're going to do that again but with the other parts of the letter. You can drag these points just by clicking on them. Just go back to the select tool to do that. Just try and make it as straight as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it as best you can. Now if you select that shape layer, you can press shift and the arrow keys up and down or left and right to move it. Or you can just use the arrow keys to move it by pixels. So just mess around with that until you think it's right. I'm going to go back onto this layer and I'm going to shorten it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this layer here, the one across the top. And I'm going to control D to duplicate it. I'm going to use the shift and the arrow keys to bring it up. And then just use the normal arrow keys to get an even spacing between them. Just mess around with this until you think it's right. So now you can turn off proportional grid and it'll just be the letter. Turn back on the background and here we go. So now we're going to animate these strokes. So go into the first one which is the bottom one, go down, hit add, trim paths, drop down on it, go to the start, hit the stopwatch for the start, make the end 100 and make the start 100. Then go forward a bit to about a second, make the start zero, then it should do this. Now that's not very smooth, so we're going to select both of them, press F9 on your keyboard to easy ease, go into this button here, which is the graph editor, right click and go into speed graph, make sure you're on speed graph, select both of these, and we are going to drag these until there's a bit of a spike. Make sure it's pretty smooth though still. That looks pretty good. So now what we can do is just highlight both these keyframes, control C to copy it, then go onto this shape layer, press control V to paste it, and then we can just modify them in here. Bring them back to the start, hold shift to snap it. This one is already right because I had it going this way and the top one goes the other way. So now close that, go to the top one, go back to the start, control V. Now this one won't be correct because it's, they're both going the same way unless you want it to be like that. I like both of them going different ways. So you go back to the start, change the end to zero and the start to zero, then shift go to that one so it locks on and then change the start to 100. Then it should look like this. 
go. Now you can close that. And that's all the animation for our letter. Now we're going to go back to this button, turn on proportional grid again. Select the bottom shape and the top shape. And then just position this so it's centered. Just note that you can't use the align tab or this will happen. We can turn off proportional grid. And here we go. That's looking pretty good. Now we're going to select the bottom layer and the top layer. Right click, pre-compose. Call this the letter or whatever you want. And now we're going to add the shadow. So click on the layer, go over to effects and presets and search up radial fast blur. Now this might seem a bit weird for this, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the solid for this, turn the amount to 100, and then position this so it's like a shadow. That looks about right. So now what we're going to do, now go over to effects and presets again and type in matte sugar. Drag that on into the effects controls. Turn everything to zero. The alliterations will just stay at one. And now we're going to change the choke one to negative 127. So then it's just white. Well, the shadow is supposed to be black, so we're going to add a fill effect. Drag that on in there. And then change it to black. Turn on the transparency grid so you can see it. Then turn the opacity down to what you like. I used 25% before. And now we're going to add the CC composite effect. Then turn off RGB only, and that'll just bring the shape back. Now we can turn back on the purple solid or whatever color yours is, turn off transparency grid and here we go. Now the shadow looks a bit wonky when you animate it. So what I did was I animated the opacity and look for when the shadow comes together, which is about around here. Set the opacity, set it to zero, then go forward to when the animation finishes and put it at opacity you like and it should look like this so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the start transition so right click new solid make it the color that is least like the color you chose for the background hit ok ok again then we've got this now we're gonna search up CC light wipe drag that on there Go back to the start and now you'll see if you turn up the completion this will start to pop in now turn down the intensity so there's no glow around the edge and then make the completion zero put a keyframe at the start then go forward a bit make a keyframe for a hundred and it should go like this now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press u on the green solid and we're going to highlight both these, press F9, go into the graph editor, make sure you're on speed graph, highlight them, and make sure you drag this one all the way to the left. Drag this one back a bit so you've got a jilt at the start and it fades out smoothly. And just stretch these out until you feel like it's smooth enough. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag this back, the letter, so this transition plays before the letter animates. Now we're going to add the end transition, so right click new solid. It should be on the same color, so click OK. Now we're going to add the linear wipe. Drag that on there. Now you can see that this will just wipe it. But we're going to change this to 45 degrees, so then it comes in from the top right. Now make it 100%. Go to where you want your animation to end. Hit the stopwatch. Go forward a bit and then put it at zero and then it should just do this now click on that solid press u to bring up the keyframes select both of them f9 graph editor select both of these bring them back until you feel like it's right and then stretch them out until it's smooth enough all right now we're going to add the 
black bars. Let's right click, new, solid, make the color black, hit OK. Then we're going to go into effects and presets and search up CC Jaws. Drag that on there, make the height 0 and completion around 80 and you should get these. Drag it under both green solids. As the letter's animating, we're going to animate the black bars. So just make the completion 100, go to around where the letter's animation finished, and make it 80. Then highlight both of those keyframes, press F9 to easy ease, go into the graph editor, select both of them, and this time we're going to bring both of them close to the center, so we've got that spike again. And now we're going to animate this letter to pop up, just like you saw in the intro in the beginning. So we're going to click on the F comp, click S on your keyboard to bring up the scale. And wherever you want the scale to come up, we're going to press the stopwatch, go forward a bit, and then add a keyframe for about 135. And then we're going to select them, press F9, go to the graph editor. And we're going to make that jolt again. Play around with the position until it's right for you. And just like that, you've got your own animated letter intro. Now, of course, you can play around with the timing for this. You can add music if you want, sync it to the music, do whatever you want. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.